Outline Speech Communication, George Alberto Gonzalez Jr., West Coast University. Thesis Statement. Transsexual inmates need their hormonal medication and treatment should be paid by the state like it is the responsibility of the institution to pay medical treatment to all of their inmates as required by law. A short story was published in 1972 by Lewis Gold, the story of Baby X, and it reminded me of a song written by S. Silverstein, a boy named Sue, performed by Johnny Cash in St. Quentin Prison in 1969. This song tells about the bullying and hardship the boy named Sue got for being named like a girl. The song helps open the, up the scene to the fight that transsexual inmates are facing. The same general ideas apply, counter mainstream culture or social norms set by society. My informative essay is, to, is about how transsexuals are treated and how they are not even fighting to go to the jail or prison of the sex that they identify with, but more with the support with getting the hormones they need to keep on the treatment they started before going to a jail or prison. It's sad to see how fellow Americans target other Americans just because they have different views or have and how harshly they judge without having the slightest idea of what it may be like to feel and see through the eyes and hearts of others. I feel that Generation X and especially most Millennials are moving toward away from such archaic, discriminative and segregative ways of thinking, especially here in California, as I feel this has become a safe haven for those not afraid to be themselves and shout out who they are and this is what must be protected. That right of individuality must be protected with every cell in our body because that is what makes us the U.S. Transsexuals have been a target of discrimination and many major controversial subjects are fought in this arena that not only affect the way the future laws will be created or past ones modified, but their experiences and openness to the world of their individuality, solidarity, and hardship has mostly been due to the fact of discrimination and not because of any other reason. To discriminate against transsexuals is to call all Caucasians racist, Mexican drug dealers, or all lead religious pe figures pedophiles. There are good and evil beings everywhere and to have such set-minded ways of thinking makes one part of the problem and stumps humanity's ev evolutionary process of society as a whole towards tolerance and understanding. An attempt to get help and representation about the discrimination or health issues due to being a transsexual, I attempted to contact an inmate that may be going through this hardship at a support webpage for transsexual rights. As I was not successful in getting this interview, I will be using an abstract of an article with accumulation of letters sent to state representatives to help with continuation of hormonal treatment. I will place it verbatim in an attempt to not misinform. This abstract is as follows. Claims of inadequate health care and safety accorded to transgender inmates have become the subject of litigation. This article reviews 100, 129 unsolicited letters from transgender inmates written from 24 states and the Federal Bureau of Prisons to identify their concerns. Among the letters reviewed were reports from 10 inmates who had filed lawsuits naming Departments of Corrections, DOCs, as defendants, claiming inadequate ex access to transgender health care. Five of these lawsuits have gone to trial. In all of these cases, the defendant settled the matter or ha was found liable as of the time of this report. Claims of inadequate care for transgender patients that have sufficient merit to be fully litigated in U.S. courts appear likely to produce verdicts in favor of plaintiff inmates. The information gleaned from reviewing letters from transgender inmates may alert staffs of DOCs to concerns worth addressing proactively to avoid the costs associated with transgender related lawsuits. It found it, I found it unconstitutional that trans, it found it, it found it unconstitutional that transsexuals had to go to the extreme to have humiliate themselves into having to tell set minded judges that they have a medical condition that requires them to have their medication. I know there are criminals and they must pay for the crime that they committed, whether big or small, but it is considered cruel and unusual punishment to deprive a person of their medication just because they don't feel or believe that it is necessary, even though they are not medically qualified 
to have ma to make a medical diagnosis and based more and is based more more on religious or personal beliefs and opinions. Another point that is another point that was brought up is that it is too expensive to pay for these hormones when diabetics insulin is more expensive than these hormones. It is an it is an American's right as citizens of the United States to have our rights protected and as a human being people have the power and will to commit a crime in their life, break the law in one way or another. In other words, everybody can commit a crime. That doesn't mean we are bad people. It's just that some rules just don't make any sense to keep or are straight just mean and will and while a crime must have a consequence but to not provide the necessary medication for fellow Americans is like sending soldiers to war without bullets and guns. Extreme survival behavior is expected, I think, especially in the environment like correctional facilities. In conclusion, A Boy Named Sue, the story of Baby X and the abstract and correspondence sent to state representatives and getting gender identity, identity free expanding treatment for transsexual inmates all help share a perspective of what it is like to be different in a world with set norms and standards and how they might not be up to par with today's especially to, and especially tomorrow's society. Even though major steps towards acceptance and tolerance have been taken, that giant leap towards the ideal is not far from view as California has made major advances in the political and legal world with our judge of the Alameda County Superior Court, Victoria Kalakowski.